Hey everybody. Um, so you guys like that simple watch strap video that we did a few months back so much. We're going to do a little bit more complicated one. I figured we'd step it up a little bit. And it just so happens that I have a watch that needs a strap. Uh, this is a gigantic watch. It came with a really not very high quality strap and I like everything on leather. So we're going to just make that today and I'll walk you through it. So there's not going to be a pattern because there's a bunch of different sizes for watch straps. 18, 19, 20, 22, sometimes 24 millimeters. Um, what I'm going to do is though, I'm going to make this a 22 millimeter strap. I make all of them the same. I do want to point out that I am not, I don't specialize in watch strap making. So I'm going to do things that are not probably the most traditional way to make them. I know that the way I attach the keeper is not traditional and I do one wide keeper instead of two small ones with a floating one. So you can adjust to your taste. Um, but this is a great way to kind of break into the world of watch strap making and make things that are functional, presentable, and you know, pretty nice. So let's get into it. So I have a, an 11 by 26, I believe, panel here of Wicket and Craig, Buck Brown, I think. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two one inch strips, which is wider than we need. But that's the whole goal here. We wanna be able to trim everything down to fit our watch exactly. So we got one, two, and I'm just using my regular ruler and the lines on my cutting board because these panels are kind of clicked out, so they're, you know they're square. Which is really nice. If you're just making watch traps out of one of these panels, you can get probably a dozen of them. It's The nice thing about making watch traps is it's a great way to use the scrap in your scrap bin, because it doesn't take a lot of leather. I'm gonna make a mark at three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna make a mark at a half inch away from that, and then another mark there. So what we're gonna do is, we're going to skive pretty much all of this, and then we're going to glue in here and in here. And I'm going to do that on both of these. So three quarters of an inch, another half an inch, and then, what is that, two inches total. So you have three quarters of an inch with a half inch gap on either side with a half inch gap in between. So after we've skived, we've obviously skived one of our lines away. So I'm just going to go back and put that in. And again, these are all rough. They don't, you can be kind of, you don't have to be perfectly lining these up or anything like that. So we want our half inch, or three quarter inch, and then a half inch there. And remember, now we're going to glue here. We're going to glue on either side, but we're not going to glue in the middle. Before we do that though, I have some of our Veladon, which is just a very, very slim nylon fabric with a, Mine has a sticky back, some don't. And this is important for these because this is not going to be strong enough. It'll stretch out on its own. So what we're doing is we're just going to line this with a little bit of the, vel the Veladon. And the nylon will keep this beautiful watch strap we're going to make in shape. Um, but I'm putting this a half inch strip directly in the middle of a one inch strip of leather because we're going to trim either side to get our 22 millimeters. So that way you don't usually end up with any of this poking out the side because we're just going to dye the side. It's not the end of the world if you do, but this is usually a good way to combat that. So I'll make sure that's really stuck down. And now we're already, we're ready to glue. All right, so once our glue's dry, we're just going to take these and fold them over. And we draw that far line so we know where to stick this to. And you can see, because we skive nice and thin, this is going to lay down no problem and stick no problem. So we're going to do that to both of these. Now on one side, I don't know what the, I don't even know what the parts of a watchman are called to be honest with you because I don't make them a lot, but the one side is like just a long tail and then this is going to be, we'll call this the buckle side. Mark out where a quarter inch from, roughly a quarter inch from here to here is. And that's where we're going to be, that's going to be where we glue our liner in. So I'll just take my rougher here. You don't have to do this if you're using like a natural veg tan, but this has a lot of oils in it. So this will just make sure that our glue sticks well to all the sides. And then we have to cut our liners, which is where my little, the way I do things kind of differs a little bit, I think. It's not any, it's not like it's gonna break or it's wrong. It's just not a traditional way to make a watch strap, which I just know that watch strap making is a very detailed art form and I wanna make it very clear that I'm not trying to say this is the right way to make them because I have the utmost respect for watch strap makers. It's a very detailed, specific skill. So I have some Vachetta here. It's about an ounce and a half. 
and we're going to cut some strips of this now. So we need one straight edge on the side that is going to be our sort of long non-buckle side. So I'm just going to use my straight knife. And I've cut my lining a quarter inch wider than my strip, so it's like an inch and a quarter. Now on the other side we need both. Now I'm not going to give you measurements. For me I have like an eight and a half, eight and a quarter inch wrist. So I do three inches. This is going to be for the buckle side. You can do whatever sizing you want. So one, two, three. Um, it might depend on the lug to lug on the watch you're using, it might depend on your wrist size, whatever, but I'm not going to give you, I'm hesitant to give you, uh, like a pattern or anything like that because this is so individual to each person's watch and each person's wrist. Um, but for this style that I kind of, my little Frankenstein together version, this is what I do. So we're going to do a little bit of skiving on the edges here. One side, as you can see, doesn't have to be super clean because we are going to wrap the other end over it for the buckle side. This one, which is going to be our buckle list side, all we want to do is just get one nice clean edge. There we go. And then I'm going to come over here and just straighten that up again. And I find using my flat knife for this kind of work is really nice because you have an automatic straight cut. You don't have to mess with the uh, the blade the exact blade. Now we got to do more gluing. So this is going to be the side with our buckle. So what I'm going to do is we have a line right here. Oh, my pen's falling out. I'm going to go one, two, three inches, and I'm going to draw a line right there. So now when we go to glue, we know that this is going to be stuck right like that, and we know where to glue. Now for this one, you can just kind of glue as far down as you want. We're not going to obviously use this entire thing, so I probably, well, maybe I will glue the whole thing, but we're not going to end up using it. So we'll just do it for, because we already have it set up that way. Make sure you go, sometimes I'll do a double layer of glue on this part, because we really want it to be stuck well. And then the nice thing about giving ourselves a trim allowance here is that we can kind of go out to the edges and not really worry about being, we can be a little haphazard with our glue because we're going to be trimming it all off. Now for this piece though, we, don't, we only want to glue to here because our buckle is going to lay in here. So we don't want any glued impeding that from kind of moving freely. But once our, all of our glue is dry, I'm going to do the lining for the buckle side first. And we just want to make sure this part is straight. The other side is going to be covered up. You're not ever going to see this because we have the keeper and everything. So we'll stick that down. I'm going to roll this. And if you want to get a little extra spice, you can go in with a bone folder and make sure you're really stuck. And then on this one, it's a little less... Uh, you don't have to be as exact with it. So the only part you need to be exact with is you want this to be nice and straight at the top. This is way too long for no reason. There we go. And then, now you can also, you can glue this in like a mold so that it's glued in a curved way. Um, I am not doing that, but I'm also, to make up for it, using a liner that it is milled. So this isn't gonna get any weird wrinkles from being worn in, you know, shaped like a wrist in the end. Um, if you were using another veg tan on the other side, you would want to glue it in the shape it's going to be in so that you don't get any weird wrinkles in the bottom. So our buckle is going to go in here. Let me draw some lines for you. So buckle is going to go right here, right? which means that we want to take a quarter inch on this side and a quarter inch on this side. This is going to be glued and we're going to stitch across it. Then we'll have our keeper, which will be right here. There'll be a K there. And then we're gonna, this is where I differ because this design differs from traditional because what you would do is usually you would fold this over like we folded this over, and then you would put the liner on top of all of it. But I find that this is an easier way if you're not used to making watch straps to make a very presentable, beautiful watch strap and get the keeper down because it can get a little dicey sewing in the, having a sewn in keeper and then some people 
I like the Sonin look better than they like just the floating look so it doesn't fall off, etc. So this is kind of my approach to it, right? So we're gonna have a little bit of glue here and we'll stitch across this, then space for our keeper, then a little bit more room for glue. And then we'll sew up, over, and down and, and secure this all nice and tidy. So that will be covered in glue, but this will not. So this is gonna be the line that we need to glue up to once we have our keeper made, yada yada. Right, so we have uh, three, an inch and a half here, so we have a half inch space, which means that we want to take off inch and a half. I'm going to give us a little bit extra because we will have that keeper taking up a little space as well. So we're just going to nip that off, and there we go. So now it is time, actually, also, see, I don't know my measurements for watch straps. I just take existing watch straps that fit, and uh, I do this. So like this one's a little bit long, so I'm going to cut this one here, and then we'll trim it down and put it. I think I'm going to go with a English point on this one. Now the most important part: we need to trim this down to size because remember, this is an inch wide, and we need it to be 22 millimeters wide. So this is about 25 millimeters wide. What I like to do is I take. I'm using my cutting board. That's the grid is there to make sure everything's on you know right angles. I'm gonna take a sliver off of one side first, about a millimeter, and you want a very sharp knife and you wanna go light passes so that you're getting a nice clean edge at the end. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my calipers. This is a good way to be exact without being exact. I'm a bull in china shop. I'm not good at being exact on anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my watch. Now you can also just make a 22 millimeter spacer or whatever if you don't have all, a bunch of watches laying around. And I'm going to put my calipers a little bit bigger than my, lug to lug, than my lug spacing, right? So that's probably 22 and a half millimeters. But that'll give me a little bit of space to sand down. I'm gonna put them on the edge that I just trimmed and I'm gonna make a line on the other edge. Okay, that's gonna be the line that I trim. If we did this right, we should, yep, fit perfectly. So now we know that this is going to fit great. We'll sand it down, we'll have a little tiny bit of wiggle room, and we're just going to do the same thing with our buckle side. So we want to make sure that we get one stitch above this lining so we can lock in this top here. So all I'm going to do is just kind of eyeball it, make a little mark, that's it. And then I know if I put my first prong there, we will get our first stitch mark perfectly over it, and then we can just do kind of the same, make sure they're even on both sides. There we go. I'm going with a fairly chunky uh, stitching spacing thread combo for this one. Usually with watch straps, you'll use a smaller spacing, and I admittedly am not usually a fan of very small stitch spacings, but the threes and the fours and that kind of millimeter spacing makes sense to me on a watch strap because it's such a small scale. Um, the watch that we're making this for is 46 millimeters, which is a very big watch, and my wrist is very big, and the strap is fairly wide at 22 millimeters, so I am using the 0.6 millimeter Ritza with 5 millimeter spacing because... I just think that it looks nice and balanced. Now, you guys, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I basically use 5mm for everything and have for a long time. But it's all personal preference. If you want to use your 3s, if you want to go get custom 2s made, um, you know, like I said, I'm very aware that fine watch strap making is in craft in and of itself, and this is not that. This is just a very pedestrian take on a nice leather watch strap that'll last you a long time. Now that we're all stitched up, well, I'm just going to do a little bit of edge work, and we're not going to go crazy with it. I'm just going to do a simple little sand by hand now, and then we'll break out the paint marker, do a little bit of a dye edge, and I 
I'm thinking just a little bit of wax and we should be good to go. Keep this a little bit more of a natural feel to it. So once we have this one sanded down, we're also going to do the opposite of this. And I'm going to go ahead and finish these edges before we sew. Because we are going to end up folding some of these over with a keeper. And um, it's just not going to really work well once this is... We're not going to be able to burnish and dye some parts of this once it's all sewn up, basically. So I'm just going to do that. And if you want to, you can do all the edges, I guess. Um, sometimes I leave these flat. I'm going to sand this down as well, and we're also going to cut a keeper and dye that as well. So for our keeper, I'm going to go 3 quarters of an inch, and uh, just use my calipers set to 3 quarters of an inch to scribe a line, which will just let us cut a little keeper here. It's going to be a big keeper, but we're going to just cut a piece of this and um, finish the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to bigger than I know we'll need, um, but smaller than that huge piece. And we'll just do the same thing, actually. Yeah. We'll do the same thing. I'm, not, I'm only going to bevel one side, though. I like leaving the other side flat on keepers because of the way that the strap moves in and out of them. Um, I don't know. For some reason, it's just personal preference. So we'll do that. And we'll give this a little sand, and then we're ready to dye all of our edges. We have everything dyed, and we have everything burnished with gum track. Next thing we're going to do is hot wax the edges. So I'm going to take some beeswax here, as always, from Kayleen and his mom's bees. And I'm going to really rub down these edges good. We want a nice coating on there. And I've started doing this more often. Um, I've always done a beeswax finish, but I've started bringing in the heat gun, and it is kind of my new favorite thing to my new favorite approach to simple but very nice edges. Um, so you can see we have quite the film of wax on there. Yep. <laughs> I take my heat gun. Almost got my face. <laughs> so close. And uh, actually we're going to go over here. Don't heat gun over your cutting board because if it's plastic it'll melt. Um, and we're just going to melt this wax into these edges. And you'll see it get liquid it, it'll, it'll get liquid and shiny, and then it'll sink into the edges, and that's what we're looking for. Now, once that's done, all we have to do is go back in and give her a little polish with this canvas, and that's going to give us a nicely sealed edge that's sort of a matte finish. It's got a little sheen to it. Eggshell, I think I usually call it. And I don't know why, but I'm just kind of been really loving this. It's a very classic leather crafty look, you know, with the saddle tan leather with the dark edge, but just an easy way to get that. So that's all we're going to do on this one. We're keeping it simple. It keeps it nice and flexible without doing a lot of layers. You know, there are people that do dimensional stuff. I mean, that's a very traditional way to do it too. I'm just looking for a nice flat strap and a very classic look, and you can't get much more classic than this. So let's get the rest of these hot waxed, and then we will get our keeper made and our buckle end made, and we'll be done. Next part we're gonna work on is our buckle side. So, first thing we need to do, well actually the first first thing we need to do is we need to scribe down a little bit of this end here. So very carefully, we're just gonna take some of that thickness out. Nip that off. Good to go there. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to fold this over. Our buckle is going to go in here, so we'll punch a hole for this after. Our keeper is going to go kind of like that. So we need to glue like to here. Leave from here to here open, and then we need to glue to like here. So that we just need a little bit of glue to come down and kiss this edge so that we can sew straight across this so we can keep our buckle on. 
So, the way I'm going to do that is pretty simple. I'm just going to put a little glue in those areas, bend it over, hammer it shut, and uh, stitch it up. If you do get a little bit of glue, like, where the buckle's going to go, just kind of wipe it off. That's all you can really do. While that glue is drying, I have my little cheap edge creaser here. I'm going to take a little bit of water. This is our keeper. Now, I'm... Um, Lazy is a strong word, but you could call it lazy at this point in the day. And I don't really like to do just stitch random keepers. It's just not my thing. But I'm going to add a little bit of a crease to the keeper to make it look like it's stitched without actually being stitched. In reality, it kind of looks really fancy without having to crease the whole thing, because I'm not very good with a creaser, as you guys know. Um, but I can manage a straight line like this most of the time. So if you're using a cold creaser like this with a little bit of water, what I like to do is I just dampen it, case it essentially. Do Go over it once, and then I'll let it dry a little bit, and then I'll go through, and I'll really lock that in with one more pass. And that's really all you need. We haven't sized this keeper yet, and that's because we're going off of a, this is a one-off situation. So, like I said, no patterns or anything. You're going to make this directly to the watch that you have at home. If you want to get into business making watch straps, you're going to want to, make this process much more efficient. Um, but I always, I only make watch straps for myself, and I always make them to the watch that I'm making them for, and this is how I do it. So I figured you guys would like to see it. All right, so I'm gonna fold this over, make sure I catch that glue. We wanna also make sure that we leave enough room for the buckle itself. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my one, two, three, four, five prong, and I'll come down here, I'm going to mark some stitches, but I want to make sure I give myself enough room again for our buckle to come through. We're going to punch a hole for the actual buckle tongue uh, to go into. We're not going to do it yet. And I'm just going to sew basically across the whole thing, wrapping around the outside, which is optional. You don't have to do that. With watch straps, I feel okay doing it, though, because they don't really rub up against anything. And I end up double-stitching everything, because it's such a small stitch line that back-stitching three just leaves you with a single one stitch, and it looks weird. Um, and then just clip and burn it. And now we're ready to size our keeper. And I do keepers, again, I don't want to call it lazy, because it's very strong, but I don't do, like, any stitching on my keepers, so you can also stitch this if you don't have a staple machine. With our keeper, we're going to pick one end that we're going to use, this end we're going to be cutting off. I'm going to skive off about a little over a half inch deep of a skive. Um, and this can be... I always aim to get pretty paper thin on this. So this will look ragged, but we have enough extra that we can just clear cut it once I get the angle that I want. And I'll go in cut that and now we have a nice beveled edge there like that now to size this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one part I'm gonna put the two parts of my strap together and I'm gonna slide this underneath because that's where the keeper is gonna go I'm gonna fold it up and you can like dampen this too if you really want to wet mold it in and then I'm gonna fold it up like this and I'll make two marks the first mark is where our other keeper ends, which is about right there. Not our other keeper, the other half of the keeper. It's about right there. The next mark is the end of the strap itself. These two marks are going to tell me where I am going to cut and where I'm going to sky from, but I'm going to sky from the top down. I'm not going to sky from the grain. Like that. Now once we're done with that, we just need a dab of glue on both sides. And this is where my process might differ from yours if you so choose. Because I am actually going to use a brass staple machine to staple my keeper together. If you don't have one of those, you can just use a stitching machine. And if you think you need one, you don't unless you make a ton of belts, which we do, which is why we have the staple machine. But couple stitches and you're good to go on this 
brass staples are cool, but they're, you never see them, and it's just a simplicity thing for us because we have the machine. So I'm going to stick this top part to that line that I skived in, and that's mostly why I do this. So you're getting like a flesh-on-flesh -flesh connection here. Um, and so that because this is a nice finished back, the whole inside of our hide now, if we skive down, you would have a little skive mark. You never see it, but that just makes it a little bit nicer doing it this way. So this would be the part where you could throw a little, a few stitches in here, or an R staple. We just have a flip press staple machine, but it's in the dark corner, and I'm not going to light it right now. So one day, remind me to show you the staple machine. It's pretty cool. But I'm going to just go throw a brass staple in here, hammer it down, and then we're good to finish our wash strap. So here we go. Glued and stapled, hammered down flat, nice and simple. So I'm going to slide this on to my buckle end, and I've marked where this is going to go. Now this is where I differ from, like this design differs from like a traditional uh, watch drop, because you would do like kind of all this first, and then you'd put this top liner over everything. I just kind of, this is just easier. <laughs> so it's on your wrist. I call it lazy, call it whatever you want, but this is how I make mine. Um, and I actually kind of like it. I like seeing both the materials on the back. So all we're going to do is a little glue here. Oh, that's a lot of glue. And a little glue here. And we're going to take some of that glue off because that is way too much glue. Once that dries, we'll just stick her together and sew it up, and we're done. So we have our nice clean keeper there. We have our line where we want this to be stuck to, and bada boom, that's it. And then we'll give this a quick little tap down with a hammer, nothing crazy. And now we basically just do the same thing, so I'm going to make sure I'm going to lay the stitch line down first. And then I'm going to go in with my awl and get a mark. It's right above that line right there, so it locks in. And then we're going to transfer that line over. And now I'll show you how I'm going to punch this. So I'm going to do a couple hits of the stitch line of the chisel to make sure that I'm getting both over the liner and onto this overlap piece. I'm going to do that on both sides first. And again, this is all, I can't give you how many stitches because it all depends on the length and the, and the chisel spacing you're using. I'm using five millimeter spacing, as I said, but your main goal is to get things even. Then I'm going to take my two prong here and we know that we have four holes across evenly spaced. So that means we should be able to get four holes evenly spaced across here. So I'm going to go in from each side so that I know that I'm even and then tap that through and we are fully punched. It'll lock in everything we need it to lock in. We are overlapping the liner here, we're overlapping the liner here. So all these layers now are going to all come together and be a beautifully stitched little piece. The buckle end of a watch strap is like wildly complicated for such a small little thing, but this is a very easy way to get a very, very presentable and saleable item. And so watch strap's kind of crazy because once you finish that part, it's like pretty much a completed watch strap. Um, so the last thing that we need to do, we need to do two things. All right, we need to punch the hole for the tongue of our uh, buckle, which I need to, oh, we'll use the rotary punch. So I just do this real simple. I get the right sized punch. We have five stitches here, so I know that the fourth one is centered, or the third one is centered right in the middle. I just punch through like that. Then I take my blade and I make two straight cuts. Bada bing, bada boom. Nothing fancy. And now we're going to put our buckle in, put everything on our watch, and we'll get our sizing, and then we can punch our sizing holes because this is mine, so I'm going to size it exactly to my wrist. All right, so I have my tongue, the buckle tongue in, my spring bar slid through everything so it's nice and secure. And this is a, a watch strap buckle from Buckle Guy. They have beautiful selection and everything is just wonderfully finished, um, which I really like about them. And we'll just slide this in, see if I can get it first try. 
There we go. So you can see how tight that fits because we used our dividers to make sure we got exactly 22 millimeters. Now this part's a little more complicated because I'm a fumbly guy. So we'll see if we can get this right. Uh, this watch, by the way, is a Glycine uh, 46 millimeter GMT. And I bought it because I wanted to see, if you're into watches, you know Invicta bought Glycine a few years back and I wanted to see what the Invicta quality was like. I can't say it's the best. Oh, I also put this on upside down. Um, so the watch itself got a really good deal on it. Um, so the mechanics of it are beautiful. The watch works really nice. The only thing that I didn't like, the bezel feels really, really cheap. It's like bi-directional and it feels like a toy. And then the, it came on a metal band that felt comically bad. Like it felt like it was like very rattly. But I think with this strap, it's going to be a very, very good deal for the money. I see these on, these, they sell online for like, the listed price is like a couple, like a thousand dollars, but I paid nowhere near that. So just wait for a sale. I think I paid like four or five hundred dollars for this. But it's also a 46 millimeter. So if you're not like very large wristed, um, you're probably not in the market for this particular model. Are we good? We are good. Okay. So we're on, and that looks really, really nice. Um, so I'm gonna take my current watch off, and now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna size it directly to me. So I'm gonna wrap this around, and right about there is the hole that I'm going to use. I went on Etsy, and I picked up this guy, which, like most Etsy tools, it's like 80% nice and 20% leaves a lot to be desired, but it does the trick. So it's basically, um, I think it's branded as a watch strap punch. It's just got five strap holes. They make elongated ones. It's a nice piece of metal. Um, even though the, my problem is with these screws all the way tight, the holes, kind of, the punches like slide out sometimes. Minimal thing for a tool that doesn't get used much though, right? So now all I have to do is punch my strap holes. And this will be a finished strap. So that's my center hole where I'm probably going to use it the most. So I'm going to do, I like to do three or two above it. And then I'll do, see, that is as tight as it goes. All right, so here's our finished watch. We have our nice back and it looks presentable. I like it. And I'll show you how it fits. Got a real nice fit on this one. And you can see um, the way I like to size things, I'll have a little bit, this is, I just like the big single keeper. It's all personal preference. If you want to do two doubles, or if you want to do a double small keeper, go for it. But this for me is, I like this style a little bit better. It's a little more clean and it's, uh, just sturdier, I think. So there we go. That's, uh, that's how to make a little bit more fancy watch strap than the last one we did. Fully stitched, um, lined which the other one was too, but lined with a different type of leather. And you can see now how you don't get any wrinkles if you use a, a milled vachetta, if you're not gonna glue it in the curve itself. So here we go. So we have the one that we just made. And then this is in shell cordovan. I always, sometimes I do a little talisman right there. I did a little heart. Um, you can do smiley faces, whatever. Initials, it's good, cool to put there as well. And you can see this has the elongated um, holes for the elongated buckle. Um, but mostly the stuff that uh, buckle guy sells, you only need the circular holes and you can easily do this by hand too. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we really enjoyed seeing the wash straps you made last time. So I, I'm excited to see you guys step up your game a little bit and do some stitching. Um, and we'll see you in the next one.